What's up, Homestead homies? It's another exciting episode of Off Grid with Doug and Stacy, and I'm Doug. And today, we're gonna plant some blackberries that we got from a neighbor, and we're going to, uh, you know, knock out a few other projects that we have going around the homestead. Uh, so, here we go. Okay, homies, real quick. Uh, what we're gonna do is plant these blackberries. Now I got my trusty shovel right here. We got uh, three like uh, clippings or uh, shoots that were growing at a neighbor's uh, house because AC hangs out with. Uh, so she was over there the other day. She gave them to her. What we did right now is just kind of stuck them in the compost that we had left over from all that shoveling that we did. And now I'm going to transplant them from over there, bring some of that dirt with them, and put them in the ground. Uh, we keep our rows, uh, you want to probably keep your blackberry rows maybe five to eight feet apart uh, wide, and then space them out, you know, we, we try to space ours out probably like four or five feet each bush. Um, and, uh, you know, if you like them a little more bushy, it just makes it a little easier to get in there and do the harvesting. I'm going to do the same thing here as I did over there, is I'm going to put in the T-post, and then I'm going to, um, you know, put in the cattle panel uh, so they can trellis and, and be supported on that. So let's get started. Like I said, we're only going to do three here and then we're going to move on to the next project. Oh, and by the way, these are just some uh, posts, like a steel um, post that I had. Um, you could have probably used a piece of rebar or whatever. It just kind of helps me keep my line straight. Um, so I measured from these bushes over and from those bushes over and then I have a, a sight line on here. It's just some kite string that I use and then that just helps me keep my row straight, okay? Um, it's, you know, just kind of help. It, it's just kind of handy. <laughs> All right. So like I said, we're just gonna put in three, uh, three clippings right now. I'm just gonna prepare the ground for them. And then we'll probably end up getting some more uh, blackberries because I'd like to have probably about three rows of blackberries because they're prolific. They, they make a lot of blackberries, but about three rows probably will be good for us. And then we'll move on to black, uh, blueberries, elderberries, stuff like that. Nice earthworms in here. Everything looks really good uh, for as far as the soil goes. Because this is where we were focused on uh, growing our garden last time, so this should be in good shape. Of course, we were composting and using manure and turning the chickens loose in here in the fall when we did have a garden. Yeah, here's some more earthworms right here. Everything looks really good. Nice big worms. It's awesome stuff. All right, so I'm gonna go get the uh, blackberries and I'll be back and we'll put them in. All right, now when I plant these uh, blackberries in, I'm not interested in pushing down the dirt and everything around the root ball. Um, basically, I just have it in the compost like I told you. I'm just gonna put it in here and I'm gonna leave it kind of loose. So that way uh, the roots don't have to fight through compaction um, as they're starting to establish themselves, okay? So this should work out pretty good. Like I said, just leaving it light and fluffy. Some of the old dirt I'll just break up around here. Everything's still kind of wet. You see it looks kind of droopy, but it should bounce back and uh, be pretty good. They weren't out of the ground um, for that long. And they did get water right away. So it's just the initial shock. You know, as long as you can keep the root system going as well, some of that stuff won't matter. It'll just grow new shoots and then everything will be fine there. Faith just chased away a turkey vulture. 
just notice that hanging around our area over here so like I say not compacting the roots at all just making sure that everything's covered up because you know the ground will settle here so what I don't want is like a dip where it'll start puddling water against the stalk I just want it nice and loose uh, kind of mounded up because it will sink you know and settle and that should be good to go so we got two down and one to go life on the homestead well springtime that is I guess you could plant blackberries in the fall uh, as well but not uh, you know you have to do it before it gets too cold in your area so that's it I'm gonna plant this last one in and then we'll uh, see what's going on in the next project <laughs> All right, now we're on to the next big uh, project. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you don't think it's just work all the time on the homestead. I mean, we gotta do some pond surveillance. Boom, third cast. Oh, spit it out. Dang it. Had me all excited, boy. I thought it was like one of them fishing shows. Ponds are invaluable on the homestead. Water, food, foraging. Man, third cast, I thought I was gonna pull one in. Now I'm on like five. I guess this is the part where I'll start some fancy editing. <laughs> uh, man, there, I'm getting them. I'm just not setting that hook. Shoot. Setting that hook. I'm just using a uh, pretty simple spinner bait.
Now we're talking. Oh, it probably took 20 something casts. <laughs> uh, we got them. Some people say uh, fishing in the morning's good, fishing in the evening's good. Sometimes I like to come out here right when the sun's coming up, especially in a bad, uh, you know, a bad weather day. Catch me some bass. It's pretty good, nice and hefty. So, looks like fish tonight, right? Actually, uh, I might put him back in there. He's plenty big to eat, but Stacy's gone, and she won't be back till tomorrow. I could make it myself, but I already have some food ready to go. So, we're just showing you, man. Right here on our own property, food, water, vegetables, fruit, meat. That is a good bass right there. Yes, sir. So we know they're in there. Everybody looks healthy. I've caught some smaller ones. You know, they're all just getting to be about the big size. They're uh, been in there like, I don't know, three years now, three and a half years. So we got bass and bluegill. So, so you can see I'm not just fooling. We got it right here. Self-sustainable 11 acres. Food. That little algae on there is going to stop my spinner from turning. Clean that off. Oh, you can cook bass a lot of different ways too. It's good. Good eating. Good eating. We've had some cool weather, so everything's just kind of waking up. Water's pretty clear. You gotta do a little pond maintenance too, but nothing too dramatic. Every once in a while, I'll come out here with the 22. I'll look for some water snakes, make sure I take care of them. And uh, turtles, you don't want turtles in your pond. They'll eat your fish clean. It's a tough life, isn't it? <laughs> Just remember, if you don't have bills, or you can think outside the box for making an income, you can do whatever you want, what makes you happy. Well, I'm probably gonna throw a few more casts here and then get on to the next project. Now this right here is another good sign in your pond. That's a little bitty bass. That means they're having babies 
and doing their thing. I mean, this, this guy is just a little bitty, no bigger than my hand. So he's going back in, no doubt. But you like to see that when you're fishing because that means that everyone's in there populating the pond. He was a feisty little bugger too. He took it all. He must have been hungry. Try to get that hook out of there as easy and safe as you can. And then you just set them in the water. You just set them in the water real easy. You don't go throwing them in. Set them in there real easy. Let those gills fill back up with water. Nice. We got abundant life in the pond. That is a good sign. You say it'll be the last cast, but you like, ooh, maybe one more, or I get a big one. <laughs> Alright guys, so fishing's done. Uh, I'm going to collect some wood, put it on the front porch so we can still use our wood cook stove. It's uh, middle of May, we're still using the wood cook stove. We usually do till about June, uh, but like I said, this week uh, they're calling for 60 degrees for a high on the weekend, so um, that works good for us. And uh, then I'm going to cut the grass, and I know uh, you guys probably don't want to see me cut the grass again, because with the cool temperatures and the rain, and then a couple hot days, I mean the grass is growing like crazy. So. And besides, I think if you look back at it, it's been about a week. So we want to thank you guys for watching, subscribing, sharing our videos. Hopefully you got a tip today too on this video about having a pond on your homestead. If you're uh, just starting out your homestead search, um, try to find property that already has a pond um, established on it or at least maybe work it into your budget on your new homestead because a pond is an, is an invaluable resource. So this is Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug and we'll catch you guys on the next episode. You would have got it done. We did 20 yards, um, cubic yards of uh, composting dirt, and uh, a little different.